Let's talk about Raw. It opened up with Jey Uso coming down to the ring. He's very excited. He's very excited that he got Yeet back because, of course, uh, another indie wrestler owned Yeet, and they very quickly got that, so he can be Yeety again. And so he uh, talks about Sami Zayn being out of action. Yeety, I'm in. Called uh, said he had a partially torn meniscus, which may be real, but Sami Zayn was taking time off one way or the other. He's going to be gone for a couple of months, it looks like. And uh, then Drew came out, and Drew, first off, says, I know that Punk's got to make his decision tonight. He says, Aldis, you can have him. This guy will destroy this place from the inside out. Everybody booed. Drew says, do you know him? I do. I traveled the world with him. I know how this story ends. But, hey, it's not about him. Let's talk about Sammy. He got done taken out because he talked about my family. And he says, how many of you... If somebody uh, hurt your family and did not apologize for it, how many of you would be happy with that? And Jace, he's heard enough of this. By the way, he still has not apologized to Drew. So it's Drew McIntyre and Jey Uso. And long match. Went through two commercial breaks. Uh, Jay hits the uh, kicks out of the future shock. Drew takes off a corner pad. Tries to Claymore, gets speared. The ref goes to put the corner pad back on, like he's got a bunch of zip ties, and ends up with Drew raking the eyes of Jay and then Claymore and pin him. It was a good match. Near falls at the end were good. And that's that's uh, Drew moving up to get a world championship match on the first Raw of 2024. Day one Raw. No longer a pay-per-view, now just a Raw. Nakamura did a promo. And he essentially said, I have been reborn thanks to you. I must bring your story to an end. And always remember that you asked for this. He says he's the real nightmare. Oh, Cody. Yeah. What'd I say? Nobody. No. Oh. Finn yelled at JD and Dom. He says, man, Rhea and I are gone for one week and the wheels are falling off the wagon. You guys lost last week. Dom lost the North American title. And Priest says, yeah, you know what? Losing sucks, but you know what else sucks? Not showing up for the show. And he says, Finn and I, we're not going to take the creeds lightly. And Rhea says, you know, it seems you're the leader. And uh, saying you're the leader is much easier than being the leader, isn't it? And Priest is mad. And he starts chewing her out. And Finn in the background is giggling at these guys yelling at each other. But then she says, stop. I'm not talking about you in particular. I'm talking about all of you. We need to show the world we still run this place. I don't let anyone in my division disrespect me, so I'm going to go take out Maxine tonight. And then Ivy told Maxine in another segment that she was going to be there for her tonight. So Ivy was there for her, but she didn't do a damn bit of good. You know who was supremely happy watching Raw last night? Who's that? Gravity. (laughs) Yeah. Oh, poor Maxine. God bless her. This was the worst match of the year. No ocean cyclone suplexes in no this one. No oceanic cyclone suplexes. <laughs> Man, she got in there and mistimed every single solitary spot she tried. And they didn't do much. And, like, every single one of them. Rhea did not look happy. And she put her in a prison lock, refused to let go. Ivy hit the ring for the stare down. Holy smokes. Yeah. Kane and Katana did a video package. They liked a party. I don't know if you're aware of that or not. God. Adam Pierce came out of the ring, contract, called out CM Punk. So CM Punk comes out. He talks about his history in this building. It's all been bad. He debuted here and got sent to Ohio Valley. And then he walked out during the Royal Rumble and let everybody down. Didn't mention he had his first UFC fight and got smashed. And he says, you know, couldn't write a better television show. Ten years to the day, Punk walked out. Now he's walking back in and he's signing that contract. I'm going to Raw. So Seth then came out and they went face to face. And Seth did his version of the Hangman promo. Which is, it's so funny when you really think about it. So Seth does his promo and he goes, don't talk about how this is your house. He says, you spent ten years slandering me. Everybody in that locker room, you abandoned this place. Now you're going to call it home. It's not your home, it's my home. 
I've been here. Everyone in the back, they're my brothers and sisters. I'll do everything in my power to protect this place from people like you. Let me make this clear. I want no confusion. I will say it plainly with every fiber of my being. I hate you. And if you are going to be a part of WWE again, I do want you on Raw. Because the truth always comes out, pal. I know, you know, everybody else knows, this is your last chance. One of two things is going to happen. You're going to self-destruct, expose yourself. I'll be the guy to slam the door on your legacy. Or if by some miracle you have changed, well, if you've got any gas left in that old tank, maybe one day you'll be lucky enough to get in the ring with me for the world title. I will expose you for the fraud that you are. I will show you there are levels to this. I will wrestle circles around you. I will let you understand in real time what it means to be the best in the world. And Punk says, are you done? That's your one pass to stand here. Speak to me disrespectfully without me coming after you. I've never asked for anything to be handed to me. Always done things the hard way. That's definitely one thing about CM Punk. He has always done things the hard way. He's entering the Royal Rumble. And when he wins, maybe Seth, he'll be coming after him. I thought this segment was outstanding. Outstanding oh, see, I, segment. I thought you'd say bootlicker versus hypocrite or something like that. No, it was great. It's a great segment. Actually, it really was. Another great little match. It was short, but boy, was it sweet. Ivar and Bronson Reed. <laughs> Literally, the spots were, let's run into each other. Let's yeah. run into each other again. Let's hit each other as hard as we can running at each other. And then they fought up top. Bronson Reed gave him a... Superplex off the top rope. <laughs> Pinned him. It's awesome. Why does this thing keep going in the subscriber and subscriber only mode? I don't Driving know. Me nuts. When I was a kid, they used to give us King Kong Bundy and Kamala as a as a gift of two big guys who were bad guys just slamming into each other at top speed. And I can tell you this, their top speed, nothing like what you're getting right now. Bronson Reed and Ivar are doing a hell of a job going up against each other. This is the kind of mid-card feud I like. We had uh, Judgment Day doing a promo, and poor Truth comes out, and he's acting stupid. And so they gave him three weeks, then they killed him. He was absolutely destroyed. The Creeds ran down to make the save. Which actually, you know, now that I think about it, I wonder if Truth will cost Judgment Day the match next week and give the titles to the Creeds. Don't think that's impossible. Punk ran into Drew, and uh, the story here is that Punk kind of, you know, nobody there really wants him there, which sounds like another storyline I remember from recently. Katana and Caden beat Candice and Indy. Oof. That was uh, quick. They're getting a title shot next week. We had Becky coming down to the ring, and she calls out Nia Jax. Brian, I, look, I know you like them, but why all the bad gymnastic routines? I mean, they have got to let You're the women. only one, brother. It was the I same cannot, thing last week. You know why? Because everybody else has got such apathy towards them that, you know, they don't care if they want to party or not. No. They're 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 much, much improved. Oy. And they, they're they going to work rings around, uh, I don't know about that, but they ain't going to work rings around Bianca, Piper, most likely. Rhea? No, Chelsea, not. Chelsea is going to have <laughs> rings work around her. Becky came down to the ring, and she calls out Naya, and Naya says, you know, I'm here. I'm not fired anymore. She says, I punched you, and you know what? It was the best thing that ever happened to you. And Becky says, I don't hold anything against you. You've injured several people, almost ended a few careers. And Naya said, that's why everyone's still talking about me two years later. You have me to thank for your career. Now Becky's mad. And basically, she wants to prove that she would have been the man with or without Nia knocking her out. And she says, I came here for a fight. There's Nia to hit her again. Nia says, you need this more than me. And she leaves. Becky said it all already. You know, the whole deal with her is if the fans, once the fans, once the blood dried up, the fans would have left if they didn't care about me. And the best Nia could come back with is, you need this more than me. God, I hope they get rid of this quick. Then we had uh, Imperium versus DIY and The Miz. Seems like there's great confusion about whether Twitch should be subscribers only or free for this show. I thought it was supposed to be free. Am I wrong? I thought it was free if you had the Twitch gimmick. I don't know. Anyway, don't know. they can argue about that while I talk about this. Did I not mention the other day? Uh, I did, in fact, mention this, I'm sure. What's that? That uh, I don't have time to really go into all of this, but 
You can listen to the Brian and Benny show Sunday. There were a lot of great things about AEW when they started that they're not doing anymore. And one of them was, you know, let's find all of the things that, that drive people nuts about WWE and let's not do it. And one of them was beating people in their hometown. And it became a deal where, like, every time you had a match in your hometown in AEW, you always won. And it, the fans were happy. There was never a problem with it. And then, you know, now it's like people are losing in their hometown frequently in AEW, including, you know, at that show, that collision taping, which had, like, what, 2,400 people or whatever in the building, and you bring out 2.0, and they're so impossibly over, and you beat them. Like, you couldn't beat Commander, who loses every single week. Commander beat them. Really? And I pointed out that, like, it's kind of amazing. Like, all the things that were great about AEW, you know, now WWE is doing it, and AEW is not doing it. Now AEW is beating everybody in their hometown, and here we have Imperium versus DIY and Miz. And, you know, I had a guy going, well, you can't beat Commander and uh, Penta. They're going to be going for some belts or something. It's like you could make the same argument about Gunther and Imperium. But they had no problem beating them here with DIY and the Miz in the Miz and Johnny Gargano's hometown. And the fans were so happy. And anyway, whatever. Wait, you don't actually have to book the match, too. Like, 2 point. That's the other one, the, yeah. The, you didn't have to book 2.0 against guys you don't want to beat. That's, yeah. the, that's like the exact same thing we used to argue about WWE. It's like, why'd you beat this person in the hometown? Well, we can't beat the other guy. Well, what'd you put the match together for? Give the hometown guy someone they can beat. We said the exact same thing. It's now flipped. It's amazing. So anyway, DIY and Miz won. And now Miz is going to get another shot at Gunther. And then the main event was Cody and Shinsuke. And uh, Shinsuke blew the mist after like 18 minutes. I was ready to just like, I can't take it after a match that long. And uh, the feud is just beginning. Nakamura and Cody. That's what Cody has to do until the Royal Rumble. Orange sold the knee, which is, he got attacked. I don't remember him getting attacked Matt Menard on said he was attacked the night before, which would have been ROH. So it's probably Cody. ROH. Are you smoking or what's happening what? here? I don't, what the fuck? What is, is happening? I have no Bro. Clue. What is this? Dude. I think there's not, I've changed nothing. Smoking is room. bad enough for you, but you don't need Brian, to do it on the air. What is happening here? God. I, I'm glad I'm not the only one experiencing this. Did you die? <laughs> I've ascended. Yeah. I don't know. And it looks like it's changing colors too, which is weird. It's going from red to blue. What the hell's flashing? I don't know, man. Yeah, I'm everyone's saying, this, shut man. your lines, dude. They're completely closed. Oh, my God. Maybe I you open them. What is... There we go. The sun moved? Well, uh, yeah, the sun... Actually, the... No! Early... Oh. Okay. The sun will continue to move, <laughs> and then we'll be able to see again. We then had uh, Abaddon take on Trish Adora. Hey guys, did you love this clip? If so, you should join our channel. Just hit the join button and you'll have full access to every single show that we do. Wrestling Observer Live, Wrestling Observer Radio, The Brian and Vinny Show. All of them in full HD, full length, plus archives of all of your favorite shows. Click join today and don't miss out.